Excellent. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs>
there haven't been any really major floods in, since then. I think that was, I think Storm Desmond, the one we talk about, was 20, either 2015. So about, yeah, about four years ago, something like that. But it was, it was really, yeah, completely devastating to the, to the town and the area. And that's why the, the, the flood defences on the river are now much higher uh, than they were. Right, I was trying to go up that road, so let's go. Right, this is a back road now up to the, up to the castle. Um, and again, it's, it goes under the railway bridge in a moment. This is called, you can probably see it on there, Long Marsh Lane, because actually this whole area of Lancaster is called the Marsh. Um, and actually, so it's no real surprise it floods. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it historically was, <clears throat> was Marchland. I can't, don't know when precisely, but um, this whole, yeah, the whole area is, is low lying. Yes. Um, and then it leads up fairly soon to the castle. And again, sort of, yeah some of these narrow these are narrower streets now for, yeah. for Lancaster oh we going under a bridge oh, yeah that's right yes yeah railway <laughs> bridge um and to the left just past that graffiti is is a really nice cycle track that again leads all the way from Lancaster to Morecambe uh, and Morecambe's got quite a nice beachfront, so it's quite a leisure area really around here um, mm -hmm. in terms of exercises and running tracks and not sort of very formal. The cycle tracks are formal on, um, but mm -hmm. yeah, there's lots of places, lots of op options. This is a really steep hill. Um, I know it from experience when running. Um, I've only got back into running recently. I'm, I'm perhaps sounding like I do a lot. I don't really. I've been doing the couch to 5k because I I did some half marathons a couple of years ago and then kind of got out of the habit when I started traveling so much for work uh, and lockdown has actually, yeah, brought a bit of it back in. So I've started really gently um, and I'm now back up to the five Ks. So I use this. Um, so this, uh, that's Lancaster Castle uh, on the, the left of the screen. And this is Castle Hill. And it's one of the, probably one of the prettiest bits of Lancaster. Um, it's, Georgian houses, a whole mm. load of Georgian houses. Um, and and it's, it, very it's just lovely and yeah. down. Yeah, it is. So it's high, it's higher, obviously. And like I say, it really, it really is quite a steep hill. We've just come up. Mm. Um, and it's over here is a really nice view of the whole city. There's a lot of Georgian buildings in Lancaster, actually, in the real yeah. center where we are now. Um, and this is kind of quite a nice view overlooking. So in, in the background there is the Ashton Memorial, which is just a folly. Uh, it's, it's in the middle of, of Lancaster's biggest park. We haven't got that many, uh, but it is a park area. Um, and there's this folly called the Ashton, uh, Ashton Memorial, um, which was built by a, a factory owner um, mm. to celebrate his, his wife's birthday, I think. Something like, I should know the history better, but something like that. Um, you can see the spire of the cathedral as well. Uh, and as I say, all these really nice Georgian houses. Um, some of them are restaurants and so on, obviously not in operation just at the minute. Um, and then here's a bit better view of the castle itself. And um, the castle is, I think, 13th century. Uh, it's certainly pretty ancient. Uh, and one of the biggest sort of things it, it experienced uh, with the Lancashire witch trials. So it's where the Lancashire witches, the Pendle witches, if you if you sort of heard of those at all, they were tried there in 1612. Um, it was actually a working prison itself. It's still a working court, um, and it was a working prison until um, 2011. So in the the bits we've just passed, and in in some through there, um, that they, they were yeah housing housing male prisoners. Um, of, of, of all types really it became not a very high classification towards the end I, I believe um, but it was a, a proper yeah proper prison um, till remarkably recently and one of the things I do is I put plays on so at Christmas I put plays on in the castle in the um, Shire Hall which is the courtroom but I have also put some all-female theatre uh, in in the prison cells we did an all-female Shakespeare um, looking at various things in in some of the cells in there um, and it, it was great it was really good um, really atmospheric venue uh, haunted apparently um, some of the, the um, 
prison, not the prison guards, the, the security guards at the time wouldn't let me go in on my own at one point because they were absolutely convinced there were, there were things in there and they had footage to prove it. It was really quite, yeah, quite interesting. Um, <laughs> quite, yeah, exciting. Um, so that's the castle. And I was just going to take you to finish with, if this is okay, uh, round the corner to the Priory. Just, you can't get, we can't get up to it on Google Maps, but I can just show you um, where it is. If I can get my, owl. yeah, good. Um, because it's a really nice area around here. I so say it's very green. Um, no, I want to go up there. Oh, it doesn't actually, doesn't matter too much. I can go up the steps. <laughs> I hope if it'll let me. Oh, it'll let me come down them when I try. Yes, here we go. <laughs> and yeah really I think it's just a case of having a look as much as anything else but that's Lancaster Priory up there which again is a really really nice uh, church building and it leads there's a walkway across from the castle to it um, and there's lots of music there all sorts there's a music festival in Lancaster um, that uses Priory, Castle, all sorts of pubs and so on, venues as well in October, which again, I don't think will be happening this year, but it's a place that a lot of people congregate for all sorts of festivals and things in the city. And then the nice sort of picturesque walk back down into the main town, if I can just move it around, uh, is down these steps. <laughs> so yeah. Church Street for obvious reasons, I guess. I hadn't <laughs> never really thought about it. You don't, do you? Um, but <laughs> that's it. And it leads down to probably the nicest um, Georgian building in Lancaster, which I'll have to go a little bit further down to turn and show you, I think. It's called the Judge's Lodgings, and it's, it's here. There's a, there's a market cross. Oh, no, there we go. Yeah. And that, this is where I was going to finish, that's all right. I'm sure it is, because I don't think I've done shown you anywhere very exciting, really. Um, but anyway, so this is Judge's Lodgings, um, and it was originally the house um, of somebody called Thomas Covell, who was the castle keeper and a witch hunter, notorious witch hunter. Um, and then from um 1776 which i did just look up earlier i wanted to have at least one date right uh, 1776 until 1975 it was the, the the house for visiting judges who would come to lancaster to then um obviously oversee court cases and so on in the castle um and it's now a museum well again obviously actually now it's it's closed um but it's um yeah it's a museum and it's quite interesting as well because for, for locals anyway because it was closed fairly recently as part of cuts in the last sort of four or five years a lot of Lancashire museums a lot of museums everywhere I know but a lot of Lancashire museums were um were, were cut were closed and it's in the last couple of years a really quite vibrant uh, group of friends uh, friends of the, the the judges lodgings have taken over and have reopened it obviously reduced hours and all those sorts of things but it is now starting to become quite a cultural focal point again because they're doing um or when they're when they're open again they do craft evenings um theater events music events talks things for all ages so it's it's kind of a, hopefully um a sign of of cultural hope <laughs> in in what has been and what continues to be quite difficult times but it's also as I say I love the cobbles around it I love the cobbled streets uh, up there's a cobbled street as well and all that little area and just the fact it leads up to the castle that way yeah looks That's... like a really lovely place and it looks like um I've never been mm. so it looks so different to what I thought it might look like <laughs> Georgian yeah. architecture you know I've been to Bath and you, you know that Bath is like a place with you know the Georgian architecture yeah and I you know I didn't expect that so that's kind of opened my eyes I think to, well, that's nice yeah yeah I mean as I say obviously the streets at the start are, are fairly typical yeah northern city or not necessarily northern city anywhere but no yeah. it has it has got a really nice um center it's got a pedestrian center as well um which i won't take you to now well i'm not sure i can even um just mm -hmm. over over a, about oh five minute walk that's the thing with lancaster because it, it I mean, like i said it is a city but it's mm -hmm. it's small uh, 50 60 thousand residents including morecambe actually um so everything really is within walking distance centrally mm -hmm. anyway uh, i mean we're, we're currently now 
20 minute walk from from where I live um, and I'm not what you consider central Lancaster you know it's, I'm just off um, so yeah I think this Georgian bit is 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 really really quite attractive and there's actually a Roman baths as well just off so there's all there's all sorts of things um, and it's well I, I like I say I'm, I'm I'm happy here I think it's a little gem really in terms of in terms of what it has to to offer and and yeah come and visit <laughs> we'll do when we're when we're allowed to yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. i just want to show you kind of geographical context um so we are in golston on sea which is in the great yarmouth area of norfolk which is where i am right now um where I was born, where I grew up. I um, I live, yeah, in the town that I grew up in. So I hope that there would be a pin on there, but there you can see, so Golston on sea, there we go. So I'm just gonna zoom out just to show kind of geographical context when it loads. So we're um, probably closer to uh, the Netherlands on the mm. coast here than we are to some other parts of the UK but just mm. to kind of give you um yeah context of where I am and where I'm talking from today and where where the walk will be um so so like Emma um I'm also going in for a local place and um as I was saying to Jess when we did a run through um a week or two ago I'm finding it quite hard to kind of think um beyond where I am now and I think it's <laughs> that kind of lockdown mentality yeah. of um, you know not being able to necessarily think you know big and out there um i think my you know like everyone else my life has kind of you know shrunk down and um so has this this walk so this is an area that um i know very well having you know lived here practically all my life um so i'm gonna just dip back in so let me find my little orange person so we are going to go to uh we're going to go along the all, along the prom along the the seafront yeah, and and um, we're going to start at the um ice cream and chip stall <laughs> obviously because you know i think it's like the obviously the natural thing to do so let me just see if my orange person will find what i um what i sort of discovered when i did the run through with um jess the other week was that um this looks a lot bleaker than i think of this place being so hmm. this is like this is obviously filmed on like a really really dull day where it's overcast and when i see in my mind golston seafront i don't see it like this i see it you know sunny happy days you know happy memories all through my life of you know licking ice cream in the sun and seagulls swooping and um you know you might have a towel wrapped around you and your hair's wet because you've been swimming in the sea but this looks like a day that probably um probably you wouldn't want to do that necessarily unless you've got like a wetsuit on um <laughs> it's like it looks like a it looks like today yes real life <laughs> Same yes. so here we are we start at the amusements if you know you want to do like slot machines you've got ice cream um companies there like small businesses independent businesses who are um italian families who have like several generations um in the area um and at the end there you can see there's like a new little pizza place and um so i think this hasn't really probably changed since Victorian time, but obviously um, it's kind of updated with the times, you know, in terms of what food is offered or what entertainment is offered, but it's like a small little strip of, um, you know, kind of seaside amusements. And it's a smaller town um, compared to Great Yarmouth, but it's still in the borough of Great Yarmouth. So it's still kind of part of the Great Yarmouth area. Um, so you can see this is the um, seafront and there's all the kind of, you know, your classic things, like there's a yacht pond there. So if you've got, um, one of those little remote controlled boats that would be the place to go <laughs> and um, there's lifeboat um, huts sort of further down you know there's sort of uh, rescue boats there's a, a sort of a breakwater um, life lifeguards and 
you know the sort of various things that you would see um, in any kind of seaside town and where I'm going to start our walk actually so we're, we're not going to walk at this bit we've just enjoyed enjoyed an ice cream a virtual ice cream but I'm going to drop us down at um, so JJ's Beach Cafe. So what you can see kind of far in the distance where that grassy mound is on the right, it's just a kind of a concrete path. So a promenade mm. that follows on this on the along the seafront. And so this part of the beach is where um, families would go. It's, you know, it's nearer to the toilets, nearer to, you know, food and what have you. Um, and then as you go sort of further down the beach, you know, it does get quieter. So in the summer months, um, you know at where we're going to go it becomes quieter and also the beach um looks sort of wilder and that's the part of the beach that i really like and um it's a part that i've kind of um sort of learned to appreciate um more now whereas you know when i was a child and you know younger on the beach it would be you know the bit near the ice creams but um <laughs> but uh where we're going to go along and where we're going to sort of walk to you can kind of see that change um so i'm going to hopefully that we drop us in to the beach cafe so this is just like further along if you were to we were just walk in imagine from you know far up in the distance is where we were um and then imagine just walking all along here and this is where you get um dog walkers and cyclists all all year round um and then it kind of follows on and there's this um beach cafe so you can see even on a dull day you know actually this is still kind of fairly um fairly busy you know there's lots of people walking around um and so up on the um where the grass is um there's a, a kind of an upper promenade kind of walk walking path and um, there's gardens on the other side and um there's like a bowls club and then just beyond that there's like you know big seaside um houses um so it's probably something that's completely mirrored all around the uk you know lots of different kind of seaside places i'm sure um morecambe has got something you know fairly there's probably things that are you know kind of familiar yeah. um yeah a kind of a british seaside town and this is a kind of a smaller one um but still has those kind of you know the lamp posts and the kind of formal gardens and the yacht ponds and all those things that you know we kind of know and love are familiar with um so you can see you can kind of go up on up upper paths to link up and there are also steps so this is the bit as i say where um you would walk to and you lots of kind of walks you either would go start from the ice creams and go to the cafe and back or if you're like looking for a longer walk you'd go um maybe to the ice creams to the cafe and then to this kind of end bit of the um promenade which we're going to go up to and then normally people would like turn back on their bikes or with their dogs um but then there's a, a lower bit of the beach that becomes quite wild and so that's the bit that we're we're working towards now so um on a on a day like today you know in real life as i look out of my window and um on a day like this was obviously f um captured it's quite a kind of it's quite dull but you can you know imagine on a sunny day it's glorious really lovely <laughs> yeah, no. um so we get to this this bit here so just in terms of a kind of reference this is about um a mile a month um less than a mile from my house and you know less than a mile from where i grew up so you know really kind of familiar spaces mm -hmm. so you can see here so you can just see that the path starts to split and goes thinner so this is often like the kind of turnaround point that people would kind of walk back up the promenade um but you can um sort of drop down on the beach so i think as we go along a little bit we'll be able to kind of drop down so the path gets thinner and then eventually it um kind of narrows off and if you were to keep walking along this path this is part of the norfolk coastal path route which goes all across the um all across the county i think it's like 80 something miles um then you know you would follow down this way and it would go towards lower stoft and, and it was then go into suffolk um so we're we're kind of on the border here between sort of norfolk and, and suffolk we're, we're in norfolk but we're just quite close to suffolk but you can see how it starts to go more, um, you know, like the dunes, it becomes mm. kind of wilder, mm. the path gets narrower. And uh, this Sounds is the part lovely. of the 
yeah and the sun has come out <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like really really beautiful and um i um i i've just like there's a couple of like recent memories that sort of in the last um couple of years that um that have really kind of you know resonate in this in this place so one was where i did um my beach school practitioner training so a bit like forest schools but obviously on on the beach environment and um we we did our training so a bit little bit further back but on this kind of um this kind of wilder part of the beach the quieter sort of part and then Jeez. i'm thinking back to um last year um me and a couple of friends we did a really long walk all the way from from the ice creams past the cafe to this kind of wild end um of the beach and we were like looking for um we were looking for sea glass and interesting things that we could find so now we kind of find ourselves behind this breakwater which i really love it's just really quite exciting so when i was here um with a couple of friends of mine um the tide was starting to come in and you can just imagine when this when the waves are coming in and then they kind of splash against these um boards and you get this big spray and we were getting you know saturated <laughs> and it was really fun and um it's but it's quite thrilling and so um on the left side you've got these boards that you can walk along and you do sometimes get dog walkers down this sort of far end and then on the right the um the dunes start to build up higher and higher so you can see that they were quite oh, flat yeah. but now they start to build up so you're in a kind of gully and you can hear um the sound of the sea but you're in this kind of like enclosed space um which is quite exciting and um this is the kind of bit of the beach that i find really like i, I find feel more drawn to this um um, but what what you find along here is that actually you get and this is actually a really good example all this like just litter and um, the white bits are there's lots of like polystyrene and um, broken up like fishing crates and um, fishing wire litter that people have dropped so you know a lot of what we can see is not just you know pebbles and your plant life but there's so much like litter that's just kind of embedded in there. And that's just like, it's quite sad actually, um, that this is, you know, you can see it, it's just really beautiful here and like a really, really special space. But um, unfortunately it's kind of that, you know, that negative, um, you know, unfortunately human kind of just rubbish. Um, that's kind of toxifying. You can just see here, if you can see that this kind of coloured bit. So some of that is brick, some of it is plastic bottles, mm -hmm. um, which is that's just really like sad. really sad. Yeah, just really sad. Um, so I think it's just like, it's, it's kind of beautiful, but there's that kind of, you know, that sort of sad reality of, of litter and pollution that has kind of, um, you know, toxified this space. Um, so there are, um, there are several beach cleaning um, groups, as you can imagine. Um, and I think that, you know, fortunately, that idea of being a kind of respectful, responsible citizen that is, you know, aware of the environment and aware of plastic. Fortunately, that's, you know, so much come into the mainstream now um, that I think people are, you know, way more proactive than they were. But, you know, once that that once that bottle, that thing is in the sea, you know, that just gets broken down and it's in there and then it turns into kind of microplastic it turns into you know stuff yeah. that just becomes yeah. absolutely you know the, the the spread of it turns from you know one bottle into lots of little parts that will just wash anywhere and everywhere um so yeah so whilst you're along this bit you can you kind of get the sea kind of seeping through and you don't get that kind of view of the horizon but um, you would have done sort of early on in this walk, yeah. but I yeah. quite like that it's in this kind of little gully of, um, yeah. yeah, and so that all these sort of twigs are kind of like nest-like, but you can see, I can just see like a green mm. bit of sort of plastic in there, but um, yeah, this is where I want to take you, because I think this is just, I love that it's, you know, it's quite wild, um, and it's quieter, and you can find lots of sea glass and um, 
yeah it's just a really lovely part of the beach that it's um that's so different from what the town is known for and and sort of you know the wide sort of great Yarmouth area is that kind of um you know like traditional seasidey holidays and the ice creams and all of that and I like that this is just a little bit along but it's you know so different to that it's got such a different feel um yeah that's where I wanted to take you both <laughs> it's lovely so here we are it is beautiful. really lovely yeah 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 thank you wow gorgeous yeah <laughs> thank you very much oh you're welcome um yeah and I think just and like Emma you know you chose uh a local place as well and I wondered if that was I don't know if you was were sort of sharing that sort of lockdown mentality of I think so yeah, yeah. when I sort of saw your call out um I, I just immediately thought Lancaster and whether that's because I am that's what I'm doing all the time